Hey everybody, welcome back. So in previous videos, I've done a lot of focus on, you know, bug out bags, different types of gear, things like that, but I didn't really ever focus on footwear. Now, some of you guys in the uh, comment session have mentioned before, hey, make sure you have a good pair of shoes, extra socks, things like that, which yes, very, very important. So I'm gonna cover that in this video today because it is a very, very crucial part of your gear, whether it be your camping, hunting, going out in the woods, just in general, it's always a good idea to have a really good pair of shoes. Now, I highly recommend whatever you do get is waterproof, especially if you're in a bug out situation and you're in a very damp climate, like where I'm at, it's very, very damp. We get a lot of rain throughout the year and trudge around in the woods, it's very thick out here. Your, your feet are going to get wet. Your shoes are gonna get wet and you'll wanna make sure you got something that's gonna keep that out. But the last thing you wanna end up with is trench foot in a survival situation or emergency situation. Now, just to kind of give you an idea of, if you aren't familiar with uh, trench foot, back in World War I, it killed 2,000 American troops and 75,000 British. Now, I'm not gonna get into the graphic details of what it does, you can look that up for yourself, which I did, <laughs> I actually Googled it and it's like, basically the easiest way to say it without getting too graphic is basically your feet will start to deteriorate and fall apart. So again, I don't typically like looking at those types of things, but I think when it's something that is pertains to survival, I think it's important to know what can happen if you're not properly prepared. It's kind of an eye opener. And yes, it's, you can definitely see some interesting pictures online if you wish to do that. I'm not saying do that, but it's up to you if you really wanna know um, the ramifications of not being fully prepared and your feet are very, very important. And obviously, yes, having an extra pair of socks uh, very important as well. So I'm gonna go over two sh two pairs of shoes that I've been wearing for the last few years. Um, I am in no way, shape or form affiliated with Solomon, the company. Um, I just like the product. This is just based on my own opinion. I put my shoes through a lot of abuse, whether it be at my job or when I'm not at, you know, if I'm out doing drills, I'm out hiking, I'm just very, very hard on my shoes. You can ask my wife. If I can get through one pair of shoes, if they last me a year, then I'm pretty much sold on them. So the first one here is, and I actually, this is actually a brand new pair. I just got these because I had worn out my my previous one. So this is my second pair of this particular shoe and it's the uh, Solomon X Ultra. This is the wide. Now, most of the shoes that I've, I've bought from them are true to fit as far as your length. You know, if you wear a 10, you're gonna wear a 10. But with these particular ones and some of the other ones, if you have wide feet, I recommend trying to get the wide version if they have it, and that's what this is, and it fits perfect. Now, kind of go over the pros of this. I, this, I really like this shoe, just kind of an all-round kind of summer hiking, um, going to the range if I'm doing run and gun drills, stuff like that, because it has a lot of the grip. I really like the grip on this. Hopefully you'll be able to kind of see it. And it's not a super hard, you know, rubber. It's kind of soft, but it has great traction and for wet surfaces as well. It's got your Gore-Tex material. It is waterproof, of course. And it's just a nice lightweight shoe if you're gonna be running around. It breathes pretty easy. Now, it has pretty good uh, ankle support as well, which is why I continue to buy their product. I know there's a thousands of shoes out there. I know some's gonna be like, oh, well, this kind's better. And it's like, probably. I mean, I'm just going with kind of that mid-grade. Um, I mean, now, not to say these aren't, you know, these are not cheap shoes for sure either, but really like them. This particular one is just kind of like my do all during summer, a little bit in the winter. It kind of depends one of the drawbacks. Uh, the biggest drawback to this, this shoe is when it comes to, if it is really cold, they don't really keep the heat in too well because they're a little bit thinner. So I do recommend if you're going to buy this for a winter shoe and be doing a lot of outdoor stuff, so I would definitely recommend at least getting a good pair of wool socks, stick socks to go with it. But other than that, really like the shoe. Uh, it's very, very comfortable. Like I said, light, it's, I mean, it's very, very light for a, for a hiking boot shoe. Um, so that is kind of my go-to if I had to, you know, if I was, especially if you're gonna be out somewhere where you don't get a whole lot of rain and you only, you're in the desert, something like that, this might be good. Now, deserts get cold at night too, so you gotta think about that as well. You wanna always, always make sure you're able to protect your feet. Keep them dry, keep them protected, keep them warm. But you can't go wrong with this. I will have links to these if you wanna check them out for yourself in the description, um, but definitely recommend this. And they also obviously have a huge line of 
women's shoes. I mean, they make a lot of different styles of shoes, lots. Some are, you know, more on the inexpensive side and some you get up close to 250 around $300. So it just kind of depends on what you want to spend. For your feet, um, don't go cheap because they are your feet. Like I said, very important. You don't want to get in that nasty trench foot or anything like that. And if any of you guys out there in the military have seen it, whatever, I'm sure you can probably comment below if you have. I think nowadays we're probably a little more prepared for uh, that sort of thing. Back then, probably not so much, obviously. That's a lot of uh, people that lost their lives due to it. And probably not a pleasant way to go. For the pictures I saw, it's, yeah, not pleasant. All right, so now for my second choice. Now, this is actually a shoe I keep in my truck at all times. This is basically my bug out shoe. If I'm out somewhere and something goes down and I have to, and I don't have, you know, maybe I just have like my work shoes, tennis shoes on or something like that, I still have these. These things are pretty beefy. They have great tread. Now I've had these for a couple of years. And so they've been kind of, they're obviously a little more dirty. I don't wear them a ton just because I like to keep them in good condition. But I do recommend if you're going to get a shoe that is for an emergency situation, bugging out, hiking, any of those things, put them on, wear them, break them in, know their limitations, know how much water you can walk through before it will start getting in. Yes, they're what these again are waterproof, but you shouldn't be just, if you're in a survival situation, you shouldn't be purposely just walking through streams and stuff like that. You want to try and avoid getting your feet wet as, as least wet as possible. So yeah, you know, I've walked through, you know, water that's comes up around here. I've never had any issues with water coming in through these shoes. Now these are definitely a lot thicker. They're a lot warmer. That's why I prefer these during the winter time. If it does get really cold, these will definitely keep your feet a lot warmer than the other ones. And these are the Quest 4D3 GTX backpacking. Sorry, I had to read it because it's a long, <laughs> long name, but yeah. Um, and again, tread is good. It's a little bit stiffer than, than the other one because it is a little bit of a thicker tread on it. So it's uh, not quite so thin, but still great grip and very, very comfortable. And again, these, I don't even, I'm not sure if these were the wide or not. I think they are, but again, that's the only issue I've run into with these shoes is just if you have wide feet, make sure you get the wide version and you'll be a lot happier. But these are just a great all around, you know, again, Gore-Tex leather, just really stout shoe. And this could be used for hiking as well. It doesn't have to be bug out or emergency uh, situations if you just spend a lot of time in the woods in general and you're going to places that are a lot colder, uh, more often than not, then I would probably go with this rather than that one because this one is definitely going to keep your foot warmer. These ones, sometimes I'm at work, I wear them to work sometimes and man, my feet start <laughs> cooking me. And of course, a lot of your heat comes to your feet, hands, head, things like that. So if you have a good shoe, it's really going to help you retain some of that body heat. Very important. And I'm sorry, I have not covered uh, shoes yet. Um, well, like I said, I've had people comment and comment when I've done the you know, the bug out bags or the get home bags talking about good pair of shoes, extra socks, stuff like that. I do carry that stuff, guys. I just haven't really gone into depth in it. That's why I want to cover it now. And it's just, it is very, very important. Your hands, your feet. Um, also, obviously, a good pair of gloves is good to have. I do have those as well. And I can always, always do a review on those. The gloves I have right now aren't, probably need to get some better ones, but they will work. So, yeah, always want to protect those main things. You know, your hands, of course, because that's what you're working with. Um, your face, your ears. Uh, if you're in a very cold environment, you just want to be able to protect those things. But feet, you're always on your feet. You don't walk on your hands. Your hands are probably a little bit easier to kind of conceal if you're just walking. But your feet are doing a lot of the work. They take a lot of abuse. Make sure you protect them and you should be good to go. And like I said, don't, you know, survival situation you don't really want to just go out there and just push them as far as you can if you don't have to don't take unnecessary risk to possibly compromise your gear and like i said just walking through streams stuff like that those running summertime those creeks stuff like that they're cold it's very cold water you don't want to risk getting your shoes you know having to stop dry your shoes out obviously if you do get them wet you want to when you have a sit down, you obviously want to try and get them uh, as dry as possible, dry your socks, but make sure you have an extra pair of socks. It's just going to be that much easier. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. It doesn't take up a whole lot of weight. So anyways, guys, I just want to cover that. I think it's very important. And again, 
probably should have covered it earlier when I was talking about bug out bags and get home bags. I do have that equipment with me at all times. Uh, I do have an extra pairs of socks in my bag and yes, very important. So I wanted to address it because I know that it's, it's come up a lot. And those are the two shoes that I've chosen because I've been wearing them for a long time. I have put them through their paces. I've put them through water. I've put them through snow, put them through hiking, um, gravel. I put them through just about all of the, you know, environmental stuff around in my area that I can put them through and they've held fine. I've never gotten water in them. Like I said, I'm not trudging through, you know, once you get up to the top of the, the shoe, water's going to get in. Okay. So it's, it's not made to just submerge your entire foot in because they're going to get wet. But if you're just walking through a couple inches here and there, you should be perfectly fine. Again, just know the limitations of all your gear, especially, you know, if you have to use it in a survival situation, you want to know how far you can push it before, you know, you're going too far with your gear. And these ones, actually the last boot I just, I just uh, shown was when I first got them, they're around 250 bucks and now they've definitely come down in price. So with the first shoe, you're going to be looking between 160, 165 bucks, depending on where you get it. And for the boot, you're looking around 180, $190. So price come down on those a little bit. The shoes about say about the same, but you know, 300 bucks and a little over 300 bucks. And you've got two really good pairs of shoes. I'm not saying buy both pairs, buy for what your environment does the most. If it rains a lot, but it's warm most of the time, maybe you don't need the heavier boot. If you're in a very dry, deserty uh, area where it only rains, you know, three or four times a year. Yeah, you may not need that big heavy boot, but you may want to, if you're going to get the other shoe, you may want to get some extra socks because again, deserts, things like that still get cold at night. You still want to be able to keep your feet warm. Now, if you're in an area where you get a lot of snow, maybe you're, you know, Montana, Alaska, stuff like that, then yeah, I would definitely go with the heavier duty boot. Now I know there's a lot of different boots out there, but I'm not in that environment. I don't get a lot of snow where I'm at and I don't need something super duper heavy duty where I'm going to be faced with, you know, twenties on the regular teens below zero conditions. Otherwise, yes, I would definitely be getting something way more heavy duty if I was going to be put into those sort of situations where I'm dealing with that type of weather. And I wanted to cover it just to kind of give you guys idea of gear that you should always have on hand. Like I said, I have those in my truck all the time. I never take them out unless I'm actually wearing them. And it's just a good idea to always have an extra pair with you. Shoes don't take up a whole lot of space. No reason why you shouldn't have an extra pair. Make sure they're waterproof. Make sure they're good quality. Don't just get something. If something is like, you know, oh, it's 40 bucks, it's waterproof and all. Yeah, you know, you might want to be kind of a little weary on that. I don't care what the, you know, the reviews say. Um, put them through their paces. Beat the crap out of them a little bit. Know, know their limitations. That's what I do. Because um, I want to make sure that I know that my gear works when I need it most. So anyways, guys. It's nice to be back again. I'm still trying to figure out the lighting. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better on this one. I don't know. I'm trying to get rid of some of the shadows. It's just, I only have one light bulb. And this ceiling is huge. It's weird. I have, all the bedrooms have one light. And it's like over kind of like in the corner. So I'm trying to get my box light set up to where hopefully, you know, it, it looks okay. And still just kind of working with everything. Still waiting for my desk and some of my other equipment. So guys, thank you guys so much for sticking around with me. I, I'm Sorry, I've only been doing one video here and there. Working on getting on a schedule. We're just about done. Next weekend is our last weekend of doing some touch up and getting a couple things out of storage and we are done. Done moving <laughs> and I, we can just focus on life. And we all know moving is not fun, but thank you guys so much. Um, hope to talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.